Welcome back, folks, to some more Star Control 2, the Urquan Masters High Definition Remake. Let me go ahead and uh, get on out of here. I've went ahead and done a little bit of resource building. Not too much. Let me get on our star map here. I'm going to go meet with the Pekunk. Alright, well, I guess I'm gonna have to fight these fucking goddamn probes. I'm not even gonna bother. God, they're so fucking annoying. Fuck off me, you piece of shit. Alright, so those probes... Way more annoying than they used to be. I'm just gonna go right back in here and buy some more goddamn crew. I can promise you the AI on the HD version is much more difficult. Than it was before. No doubt about it. And hell, while I'm here, if I'm going to do that. Going to buy one more thruster. We need those top notch. So let's head again. Gamma Kruger. By the way, I like the uh, captain name of Ash and the Starship Boomstick, so I went ahead and just picked it. use the winner from this next previous video and this one for the next couple videos I'll squeeze you in there don't worry the bottom line is I just cannot wait to play this game I gotta at least play it once a day it's too great I'm a big army of darkness fan so Captain Ash and Starship Boomstick just fit And we got funk all over the funkin' place. Do not be frightened. We are powerful creatures, yes. But we could not hurt you any more than we could squish the helpless fruit worm. We love the fruit worm. We are one with the fruit worm. We are one with you. Of course you realize this means you are one with the fruit worm. Rejoice! To be one with the fruit worm is to be alive! And why not be alive? Is that not what living is for? We are friendly beings who seek established friendly relations with your species. Although we the Kunk have no rank, no pecking order, no arbitrary scheme of dominance, we do recognize that some of the souls in this universe have lived many lives, while others are but spiritual chickadees. I, Captain, have lived 38 lives. A paltry number compared to those wise and ancient souls who guide our race. You must consult them, Captain. They will help you to understand yourself. 
and in doing so, understand others, who in turn may or may not understand other things. Seek those wise birds at our home world, and Gamma Kruger 1, they have all the answers. We're dedicated to finding the Iroquois hierarchy. Can you help us? See the wise ones at our home world, Captain. Go to Gamma Kruger for your answers. Yes, by all means, if to be his calling. I am sure we'll see each other again. Perhaps when the stars are aligned in an appropriate configuration. Yes, my inner voice is telling me that is correct. When the stars align, Captain. All right, you googly eye motherfucker, move. <laughs> Holy bakunk! What? A spirit voice rings within my soul. It tells me that I must give you something, something to aid you on your noble quest. What, spirit? What must we give this young human? Mineral resources? No. Important secret? No. Starship? No. Then what is it, spirit? Spit it out. What? That there? Are you sure? Okay, here you go, Captain. Take this clear spindle. It is an ancient and powerful device built by the precursors hundreds of thousands of years ago. What does it do, you ask? I haven't the slightest idea. A special portent and serendipitous omen have foretold your arrival. Welcome, alien guests, to the home of the gentle and playful Picard, children of the cosmic light. Goblins of joy, seekers of spiritual truth, and other stuff like that. Avast! Perhaps we should introduce ourselves. I'm Captain Ash, in the command of the Boomstick. Yes, yes, we know all that. We are not known to have galactic sector as powerful psychics for nothing. Of course, we already know the answer to this next question, too. But we enjoy conversation. Why have you come here? Come to your home world to offer you aid and assistance. This vessel and its crew are at your service. I am forming a psychic link with you. I sense that you refer to our conflict with the Ilmat. I sense that you are offering to venture single-handedly deep into Ilrath space and do battle with their best numbers. And I can see that you give not even a thought to the danger you would be in. You are noble indeed, and I accept your offer of aid. But in spirit alone, the comic burden of your gruesome death would be too great. Still, I say thank you, Captain. Let us unite and form an alliance. We will provide you with all of the crew, ships, and resources you desire. We will give you... Wait! I sense that you are offended by our crass material offer. Yes! I am ashamed. Any warmongering species could offer this. We are the cunt, children of the stellar breeze. We shall give you what all others could not. The greatest of gifts. We shall give you our love. Ah, you are speechless. Do not talk now. I can feel the energy connecting us. Let us talk while the silence remains. Farewell! But wait! Before we go, as a small token of our love, not as a material gift, mind you, we give you four of our mega ships, fully crewed. Good luck! Alright, got some spatty ships. We're gonna head back to our... So, yeah. 
And we're gonna sell out the Whoopsie ships. Whoopsie dear and Charlie Bazoo! What a good day I am having! First, my nest mate surprises me with extra fat and spicy grabs for early meal. Then I am complimented on my fine display of ceremonial tongues. To top it off, I encountered a human friend, loved by all the kunk. Can things get any better? <laughs> I've always wanted my fortune told, would you mind? Not at all. You are an open book to me. Ah, oh, how quaint your little life is. So refreshing. Anyway, I see in your future that you will be jumping across the galaxy through dimensional doorways which are at your back and call. This ability you shall receive from a mysterious and yet somehow I think lovable alien race called the Arilu Lande. Or or Lovely Happy Day or something like that. Also, I think that you will have 14 children and die at an early age. No shit. Adios, Pagunkos. Goodbye, Captain. When the crystal stairs walk the road came into harmonic union, we shall meet again. That sucks for me. Looks like we got good enough thrusters at this point that where we can outrun. Look at the fucking amount of shit we got going on here. This just seems a lot more aggressive than the original. and turn signals. That's what the fuck I'm talking about. Alright, probably another good idea would be to add a little fuel tank. I hope the battle pick. Can you sign this analyze that I required since my last visit? The analysis reads as follows. Subject, clear spindle device. Data, the object in question has no clear use or means of activation, but does have superconductive characteristics between 18 and 22 degrees centigrade. We suspect that it is a precursor manufacturer, but we cannot be certain without extended study. Summary, in all likelihood this object is part of a larger device whose capabilities remain unknown. That's the end of our scientist's report. 
Try to avoid... Avoid getting killed. Yeah, I fucking know. Got more fuel. And we got some more shit to do. We got our devices here, our clear spindle. Let's head to. Uh, let's go mine some minerals. The Ilrathi space is dangerous. Gamma Volantis. You want to try to avoid all the Ilrath encounters? And we're going to try to mine Gamma Volantis and Epsilon Volantis. faster than the HD version. Obviously we're dealing with some good minerals here. Nice exotics. out not only Gemma Volantis but also Epsilon Volantis. thrusters and turning units were a lot harder to catch. And here I think we're going to check out planet 4. If I can manage to get there. Oh, 
definitely worth the fuel in this case. When you're picking up exotics that are worth 25 per unit, it's, it's usually worth the fuel. Alright, so we got some nice amount of resources there. We're going to go ahead and save. We're navigating. signal about the Rigel system which we need to check out. So let's go do that. This is a Zot Fick Punk. There we go. They recognize me now. Attention, Starship. We are the Zot Pot Pick. Make no hostile actions. We come in peace and with goodwill. But if you make one false move, you're a vapor. Don't worry. My companion is just a bit nervous. No, I'm not. And argumentative. No, I'm not. We are a scout vessel dispatched from our home world. We have traveled far through hostile, uncharted space to find you. We hail from the Green Dwarf Star at coordinate there far. Aha! Pahoy hoy! No, you idiot! In their coordinate system. Oh, uh, <clears throat> coordinates 400.0 by 543.7. Which one of you creatures is the fuck? He is. No, she is. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Christ, we've been through this a billion times. That doesn't change anything. You're the fuck. Well, Captain, as you can see, this is a point of some contention. Fuck! We're the Empire of Ashes flagship. Boomstick from Earth. What are your intentions? Hooray! That we finally found our saviors. Maybe. At last, our search is over. It is just as the Great Crystal Ones promised. They look sneaky. I think they're lying. Quiet, fool. Can't you see our nightmare is over? This ship is from the Great Crystal Ones Fable Alliance. The Alliance of Three Stars. Maybe. Before we go on, tell us more about your species. In our ancient past, four species evolved intelligence on our homeworld. Simultaneously. They were the Zark, the Fot, the Pit, and the Zabrank. We three, the Zark, Fot, and Pit, evolved in such a way as to acquire sustenance from many sources. From airborne double plankton, from solar and ambient energy, and from rocky fungal clingers. Our favorite. The Zabranki also consumed a variety of foods, namely the Zak, the Fox, and the Pit. To survive the predations of the Zabranki, we banded together, annihilated the Zabranki, and formed the cooperative union you now encounter. What do you seek from us? We are a relatively peaceful group of species. Unless we're angry. So, we find ourselves in need of help. 
We only need a little because of our desperate situation. Desperate is too strong a word. I think trouble sounds more like it. What nightmare are you talking about? What's the matter? Our planets are under attack from an invading horde. We do not know who they are or why they are here. We are being blown to bits. Fleets of alien ships appear out of nowhere, then unleash terrible destructive energy. Fortunately, they release these energies on each other. Unfortunately, they favor combat near strong gravity wells. Their stray shots regularly strike the surface of our planet, often with tragic results. Fortunately, they have never found our homeworld, only our colony planet. Unfortunately, all of our colonies have perished as a consequence. Hey, space is a tough place where wimps eat flaming plasma death. Oh dear. I told you he looked like a creep. No, we must try to understand. His ways are not like our own. You mean his whole species are jerks? Let us give him one more chance. Just look at him. He's a killer, I tell you. We want to help. What can we do? These are the words we have prayed for. Hey, this trip's not a waste after all. More than anything, we seek an ally to help us survive in this hostile universe. We are having some problems of that general nature. But we are only emissaries. You must meet with our leaders. They are wiser, more powerful beings. They look just like us, though. Fly to the star called Alpha Tucane. The planet closest to the sun is our home. And if possible, hurry! Alright. While I'm here, let me check out... God damn! Trajectory like a motherfucker. Touchy, touchy, touchy. Talk to the Zot Fuck Pick. Always be watching your fuel. We obviously have maximum efficiency at this point. Which of course is the first thing you want to do with any star control game. Is max out the thrusters. I'm looking quite forward to doing star control 1 and 3. But I had to get a great, fantastical HD version of the Star Control 2 out there. Because if you search around on YouTube, it's not really out there. It's just a bunch of faggotors trying to do this game. Yeah, and they suck.
Oh yeah. Nice and exotic. Just the way I like it. Sixty-one exotics. That's a decent amount. Now let's go ahead and uh, That place. Once we get to Alpha Center, we're gonna head up Planet Two. That beautiful blue planet there. Look at all them big fat resources. Holy <laughs> shit! Are you fucking serious? Goddamn stupid, dude. I'm not even gonna goddamn fucking bother. You fucking faggot. Okay, yeah. That's not even what I just goddamn loaded, you stupid son of a bitch. Fucking with any of those places till I get a better lander unit. So we're just going right to the spathy homeworld.
We're gonna hit the moon. Oh! Become the spaffy. Surprise and terror! I am greeted by the smooth and hostile face of our old enemy, the Hootman. No, the shoot glad? No, no, I remember. The Hoonab. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. We're in a peaceful mission through the cosmos. Two aspects of your last statement defy the course of nature as I know it. First, peace, as you call it, is an illusion. If you have peace, you simply haven't yet seen the thing that's trying to kill you. Second, peaceful missions through the cosmos rarely require weapons large enough to punch holes through a small moon. Let me be frank, we seek allies. In case you have not forgotten, we are bonded to the Urkhan as slaves. The punishment for the plan you propose can be described as death. That brings up a good point. If you're such cowards, why do you fight for the Urkhan? This is a sad tale, so do not even try to contain your tears. After the Urkhan demolished the Ilra, they turned the force of their armada against us Asasafi. The term rapidly subjugated would best describe what happened next. When the Urquan arrived at Takewa, there was a great ceremony. Part of that ceremony involved blasting portions of our planet's surface into radioactive dust, and this part we did not enjoy. But the worst was yet to come. Our leaders were called into the command chamber of Urquan Lord One's Dreadnought, where they were read a long and complicated document explaining the choices given new slaves. When our leaders heard the term forever encased and impenetrable shield, they grew overexcited, I'm afraid, and made a fatal error. The decision was to be transmitted to the Orphan via one of two rods, one colored black, the other white. Our leader handed the white rod to one of the Orphan's servants, signifying fellow slavery. But the servant somehow exchanged rods and handed the Orphan Lord a black rod, indicating our desire to become fighting slaves. By the time we learned of the switch, it was too late. The Orquan would not permit a change in status. Following that most tragic day, we were forced to assume the role of an Urquan star thug. We tried to avoid combat, but the Urquan gave us three warnings, each more strident than the last. When we learned that there would be no fourth warning, simply annihilation, we attended to our new role with improved vigor. Oh, and perhaps you have already guessed, the Urquan's servant who made the switch was an Umga. Under your circumstances, I think it'd be best to be allied with her immediately. Sure, consider it done. Allies to the bitter end. Not you can tell us of your species. We can next be described as a meta mollusk, possessing the best qualities of both the clam and the dravat, which is not native to your world. We are intelligent and clever, though you would never call us cunning. Each day when we awaken, we call forth the traditional sati prayer. Oh God, please don't let me die today! Tomorrow would be so much better! But do you really want to get out of this great mystery called life? I want to live forever with no pain whatsoever, owning vast personal property plus a company of new miles. If this is in your power to give, I beg of you to do so. Ah. Uh. Are you prepared to die today, Spaffy? We, Spaffy, are always prepared to die. We know just what to do. It goes something like this. No! Please be miserable! Fuck my claws! Please! No! I beg of you! The pain! No! <laughs> You've heard that you're a race of cowards, is that true? Yeah. Absolutely, and with no qualifications. This system has kept us alive for millennia, and we see no reason to change it now. Wanna fight? Uh, yeah! 
Yeah, we do. Okay, next fight. Here we go. We're raring to fight. Oh, um, we changed our mind. We don't want to. Sorry. What? You idiot. I told you that wouldn't work. I can't believe... I'm not gonna fight these guys. Are you fucking stupid? And why don't I have the correct dialogue? This is getting fucking annoying as shit. You are mean, cruel, and deceitful. I suspect you are an ill rat in its clothing. What do you want? Hey, look. We made mistakes, I admit. Let's just be friends, huh? My soul is warmed by your sincere and heartfelt words. It is decided. We shall be friends forever. However, I soon must go about my duties, and sadly we may never see each other again. I will remember you forever, Captain. And, as your new friend, I can confide that should you decide to make a more general plea to this party, say, for your past deeds of thuggery, you would be well advised to seek the High Ruling Council at Katiwa. Goodbye, friend. Spadiwa! What is the secret cipher? We are the the Spati High Council. You have given us the correct cipher, and so you will not be destroyed immediately. Now, if you please, tell us how you acquired our most secret Spati cipher, which every Spati swears never, never to reveal, even when threatened with considerable pain. We met a Spati on Pluto. We became good friends. And just where is this spotty friend Well, fuck, now? he's in my armada, Never mind. you dumb bitch. The answer is all too obvious in your tiny, dry eyes. Yeah. Yes, in your tiny, dry eyes. We have Fwiff on board. He can vouch for our good intentions. If you held a weapon to Fwiff's head, he would say anything you wanted him to say. In fact, if you held a vegetable to his head, he would probably say anything you wanted him to say. You come in peace and with goodwill. No, you arrived in peace. You came in a somewhat more violent manner as indicated by this report from the Spotty Patrol vessel you attacked. Oh, uh, that was a misunderstanding. Of course, Captain. We realize that misunderstandings happen occasionally. Let us just hope that no similar misunderstanding causes us to open fire on you with our planetary defense batteries. We offer you our hand of friendship. Join us in our many allies. We are too afraid of the Urban to consider such an alliance. They would most certainly punish us with extreme tortures. We're stronger than the Urquan. You're better off with us. Hello? Hello? Awaken from your dreamy state, you them. Now is the time for realism, not wild fancy. Yes, we are strong enough. Look at our precursor vessel. Is that not unique? Yes, your vessel is unique. And here is the crux of the problem. A unique, meaning singular, starship is not equal to the task of destroying the entire Earth One Armada. If you had, say, 10,000 similar starships, we could take your boasts more seriously. Look. What do I have to do to prove this? Do you uh, destroy your entire fleet? Well, that would probably work, but I have a better idea. A test. One of those questy kind of things. Yeah, what do you have in mind? You must wipe the evil ones from the face of Spatiwa. Tell me more about the evil ones. Let us explain the sad history of our species. One thing explain the sad history of our species. Once upon a time, many thousands of years ago, we inhabited the warm, safe surface of our home planet, Spatiwa. We were happy and content. During those golden centuries, we evolved from a primitive nomadic culture into a complex agrarian society. 
we learned to write on clay tablets and we were well on to being able to read those tablets when the darkness fell upon us. When the evil ones came, creatures from the darkest pits of hell they were, they hunted our people, devoured them like tasty nodules, and we had no defense against them. Suddenly, our culture became once more nomadic. We fled across the ocean from continent to continent, but the evil ones always followed. Spurred by our great need, we advanced from bronze to atomic technology in less than one of your centuries, but none of our innovations was a match for the evil ones' natural cunning and ferocity. Finally, with no other option available, we fled our world and took up residence here on our own moon where we have resided most uncomfortably for the last 300 years. Okay, except start packing your bags, eyeball dudes. We'll be home in no time. We will await your return with great anticipation. Simultaneously, we will prepare a short, poignant eulogy to mourn your demise. Alright folks, that wraps it up for this video. Stay tuned. Make sure you name your captain and starship for the next video. And thanks for watching.